Let him up. Good day, Martin. Dick. Give one to your mate, you bludger. <laughs> Jesus, good to see you. Good to see you. Look at you, flashes a rat with a gold hey, tooth. bush, loud. <laughs> How come you're back from university? Oh, mate, it's a long, long story. Oh, it's like that, is it? What's Sir Rupert got to say about it? Well, I've been dodging father since I got in last night. Oh, you'll get away with it, you always have, you bludger. <laughs> hey, I'm not the only one bludging on the Barrington. Right, you lot, what do you think? This is a bloody picnic. Queensland property for a few months. We'll clear out those scrubber bulls and put some good bloodstock in among them. Yeah. All right, you're on. With a bit of practice, you might make a fair offsider. I tell you what, I'll, I'll speak to father about it. But damn it, boy, you can't just walk out of university like that. Well, I have. You owe me an explanation. Father, I've had years of schooling. It's enough. In what relevance is a degree in running a cattle property, anyway? I don't want you as just another farmer secured in his provincialism. I had hoped you'd go on to my old college at Cambridge. But what I want is to learn this trade. An unfortunate term. But just give me some breathing space for a year. Then, if you wish, I'll take my degree. See, Dick and I were talking about the Queensland Out property. Out of the we... question. Why? There's going to be a war. I will not have a Barrington stalking in the outback while the mother country is in peril. Father, what on earth are you talking about? I mean, that war, if it happens, will be 12,000 miles away. What's it got to do with us? Your shallowness astounds me. Perhaps university was a waste of time. Martin, we are British and being oh, British... Oh, I thought we were Australian, Father. And being British carries with it responsibility as well as privilege. But whatever the Europeans want to do is no business of ours. The bridge goes down. How long will this country stand? I've heard all these arguments... You may have heard it, but you obviously haven't listened to it. I'm not going back this year. I accept that, Martin. This year we will have important things to do. I may have an interesting surprise for you, which will resolve all our difficulties. And we'll talk later when I know more. Mum, I'm not running off. I'm just going to visit Dick for a few days. You can come if you like. <laughs> Doesn't seem much of your brother either since he's kicked on at the Barrington place. Bloody rich squatters. Imitation pommies. Use up the working people and throw them aside when they're no longer wanted. Oh, a cottage for life and a pension is hardly what I call being thrown aside. It doesn't bring your father back. Larrikin's son of theirs is home. Martin? Yeah? They reckon he got kicked out of that fancy university. Probably swallowed his silver spoon. <laughs> and the Prime Minister has sent a cable to London saying, indescribable enthusiasm and entire unanimity throughout Australia in support of the Empire in war. Here, here. Here, here. We have never been so united. The whole colony will give its nation, to... father. We're no longer a colony. A uh, nation, then. Things ago, I don't know where you've been up. Oh, it's growing all the time. Excuse me. Rupert has organised with the cabinet that they telephone him when a decision's been made. It's probably only the butcher. <laughs> I say, Martin, um, if it starts, will you be going? Most definitely. Oh, terrific. Ladies and gentlemen, Great Britain has declared war on Germany. But not, ah, not before time either, either, Rupert. Australia, New Zealand and Canada have announced they will be raising forces immediately. Good, oh, sir. Wonderful. Jolly good, Rupert. 
once we of the Empire set our minds to... Roberts, tell the staff to tap the barrel now. I could be a nurse. <laughs> you faint at the sign of blood emission. Well, then perhaps I could read to the wounded. Well, for better or for worse, here's to Australia. Australia. Now, Martin, we shall drink the toast in their proper order. The King, God bless him, the Empire, and then the land we love, Australia. King, King, King the Empire, Empire Australia. Australia. You're getting tidy in your old age, mate. Dick! God, vision of loveliness. Spare me the Barrington wit. <laughs> the barrel's down that way. What the hell was a barrel? Oh, do I hear a note of petulance? Very likely. Which shoulder can I cry on? Neither. Oh, oh come on then. Tell all. Oh, no, I'd rather talk about you. They tell me you're a qualified nurse now. Well, congratulations. Thank you, Squire. So, will you be staying into Langarook? Oh, not on your life. That nursing certificate is my passport out of the bush. Was the bush that bad? From my point of view, it is, yes. I have two choices here. Marriage and childbirth, or childbirth and marriage. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, I'm going to look for a soapbox or something you can preach from, you know? Oh, you! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, who's got a grope on me sister? Oh, look, there's ants in every picnic. <laughs> 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 oh, boys, we'll be boys. The three of us, huh? Just like old times. Old times don't come back. Oh, we'll make them. Coming down for a beer? Oh, no, I wouldn't want to spoil their little war fever. No, I came to talk to you about Queensland. I'm going, whether father likes it or not. Ah, oh, yeah, Queensland. Well, there's been a bit of a change of plan. Your idea. Well, uh, me and the boys are going to join up. let this historic moment pass without a few words. As your member of parliament, most of you know me. For those of you that don't, keep your hands on your wallets. <laughs> we are as one on this great issue. Australia will defend the mother country to the last man and the last shilling. Would to God that I could go with you, boys. Oh, no. A fair dinkum would be got as one whose duty lies at the home front, I want you boys always to know that Cyril Earnshaw is right behind you. Yeah, 12,000 miles behind you. If you had one speck of shame, you'd join up. I am going to join up. going to join your outfit. My outfit? Yeah, B Company. Be here when they go and be here when they come back. <laughs> You're joining us, are you? Well, mine as well. It comes to a choice between face and the guns. Face and old windbags like him. I'll take the guns every time. Fat query. Martin Barrington. Good place to meet you, mate. Keep it still. Turn will advance. Left! Cut! Left, I said. That man with the big hat. Steady. Stand easy. Men of number three platoon, I am Lieutenant Harold Armstrong and I am your platoon officer. You have all joined the colours of your own free will for the duration of the war. As volunteers, you will be treated like intelligent adults. Our battalion, the 8th, has formed so rapidly that there is a shortage of non-commissioned officers. So I have two temporary appointments to make. 
Firstly, is there any man who feels he has the experience to perform the duties of a platoon sergeant? Sir, MacArthur, sergeant with the afternoon rifles. Yes, MacArthur, you will have three weeks trial as sergeant. Now, a volunteer for corporal. Come, come, lads, the job pays an extra shilling a day. I'll be nappy. Yeah, me too. Right. I will have that man there. Do you agree, Private Barrington? You were a cadet lieutenant, I understand. Yes, sir. Uh, if that's what you want, sir. Good. Then that's settled. Sergeant MacArthur, take the men away and get them better dressed. Then give them two hours of close order drill. Sir! Return! Ten! Hunt! <laughs> What are you men? Let's get to know each other. They all know who I am. You may think those high and mighty officers run the army. Well, you'd be wrong. The army's run by sergeants. I always thought Bly was a captain, not a sergeant. What was that? Oh, I said uh, they should have made you captain, sergeant. Yeah. Well, right, I want you to call out your names and tell us what you did in city life. Johansson, dirty farmer. Johansson, dirty farmer. Well, well. What have we got here? Two and a half Dutchmen. Not Dutch, Sergeant. Danish. Carry on. Harris, Rasabat. You a pommy, Harris? English, Sergeant. I've been watching you, Harris. You look like you've been in the army before. I was in the Boy Scouts, wasn't I? Is that so? Next. Collins, bootmaker. Baker, stockman. Cleary, middleweight champion of North Queensland. All-time champion horsebreaker of the Outer Bar Coup. <laughs> and breaker of women's hearts everywhere. Oh. Anything else? Well, sometimes I tell lies. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Cleary. Next. Barrington, student. You're a bit old to be in short pants, aren't you, Barrington? What happened? They keep you back a couple of grades. <laughs> University student, sergeant. Oh, an educated man. Well, it's real nice to have a silver tail like you in the platoon. I thought we joined up to fight the Germans. What was that? Come on, speak up, laddie, so we can all hear. I said I thought we joined up to fight the Germans, Sergeant, not each other. Yeah. There's another thing you want to know. Now that you're in the army, you all come under King's regulations. Now, that's a big, thick book where they list all the crimes they can think of. For the crimes I haven't thought of, the offender will have to deal with me in person. Things like having a big mouth, Cleary. Hey. And the penalty might be meeting me behind the tents at night. Right then. Let's begin. Now get back to attention. Return. Right. Turn. By the left, quick, march! Which way is it meant to go? Look, straight ahead. <laughs> straight ahead? The other way. Hey, look at that. We've got more important things to do. Morning, sister. Can I carry a gear for you? You certainly can. Struth, what are you doing here? Mum said me to keep an eye on you. You can't. You can carry your own gear, sis. Morning, sister. Well, well I'll uh, carry them. May I be of assistance, ma'am? Thank you, Private. Oh, cool. 
Well, where are you, Lady Stane? So, this is what you meant when you oh, said yeah. you'd be seeing us, huh? Well, I've had my name down on the reserves for months. And you never told us? You never asked. That was really good to see you. <laughs> you, uh, you coming to France with us, or...? Mm-hmm. Well, France, now I can tell you a few Put stories about... Put the bags about... down here, please, Corporal. Bah. <laughs> Cut the Corporal. <laughs> oh, I see. Army rules. Some places are out of bounds to other ranks. But you'd understand that, wouldn't you? Just like the big house at Hereford Downs. Well, one to you, madam, but I'll even the score. What? By applying for a commission? Oh, I wouldn't go that far, but I'll get you back. Plenty, <laughs> mind you, I've always been a top man myself on that sort of score. So we went for a day trip. Uh, just a day trip, mind. Little town called Boulogne. Nice scrub, but the beer wasn't much. Well, someone said the other day that the French eat frogs' legs. I don't think I'd like that much. Hey, boys. Dick. Dick. Hey, Dick. What do you reckon, Marty? What's that? Well, they're saying in France that we could be eating frogs' legs. <laughs> it's not compulsory. What say you've been, then? Mm-hmm. Life's fairly snouted the young squire today. My sister's a lieutenant, and Martin Barrington's only a corporal. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, what's France like? Uh, well, I went up the uh, Loire Valley, and it was, well, like something you've never seen before. A great slow river that never runs dry, vineyards, castles, a sun that never gets too hot. Any Sheilas? The Sheilas. You should try Paris. Well, go on. Folly Berger, Moulin Rouge, Baltabran, wine, women and song, right round the clock. <laughs> One soon learns to expect the unexpected in the army. On the day our transports were getting ready to leave Australian waters, Turkey came into the war on Germany's side. Instead of the fields of France, it was the sands of Egypt. Now, after five months of training, we were heading for a place called Gallipoli. Martin said the idea was to attack Germany through the back door. They even gave us a new name for the occasion, Anzac. Well, Pat says it sounds like a South American Indian tribe, but it stands for the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. The mood was quiet. The boys knew that all of Australia would be watching us today. Okay, buddy. Here's to Australia! Come on, let's get up there. So the boats were all mixed up. I can't make contact with the company. You're on a hundred others. <laughs> yes, sir, but, but the map doesn't make any sense. You're dead right there, son. Signaler, get a message to the Colonel. Train the fools have landed us a mile to the north. Oh, gee, that they're on the wrong beach. Hey, Otto, slip up and tell the Turks it's a mistake. You bloody tell them, Cleary. Not me. section will be along soon. Keep your heads down! You ready, Eric? Move them up, Sergeant! On your foot, guys, and up here! Stretch your bearers! Move them, guys, move them! Watch your footing!
it equally. Oh, I like to be stuck with a bloody pocket, Napoleon. Which way to the beach? I may be buggered, but I'm not stupid. Look, mate, what do I know about the bush? Oh, we cannot do it. You go. I'm not going without you, mate. Getting out of here. You know, someone said that the main weapon in this war is the shovel. You're not wrong, mate. Well, see anything, Dick? No, but they're out there, all right. Hey, company, stand to! Something stirring, sir? Yes, they're mounting a counter-attack. We'll hold. Look around. What do you think? Good luck, Martin. Same to you, sir. Treated, sir. Told you we'd hold him. Another step back, though, we've been up to our necks in salt water. It's not over yet, Martin. Yeah, you blokes have never eaten like this before, let me tell you. And of course, me piece of resistance. Damper started with raisins, smothered with apricot jam. Spotted dog. Looks more like a sick cat to me. Yeah, yeah, we'll show you, city blokes. Now we live like kings up the bush. Mm. All that's missing is a tender little leg of jumbuck. How about a bit of Queensland goat? I heard that. And if I recognise the voice, you'll get nothing. Sit there with... Dump. I wouldn't swap ten yards of the drought-stricken Varku for this whole bloody rotten fly-blown peninsula. The Anzac Corps commander, sir. I came ashore as soon as I could. Well, those uh, New Zealanders and Australians of yours, Bridges, have done a magnificent job. Someone made a similar remark after the charge of the Light Brigade. If you have something to say, then say it. 
I believe it's time to seriously consider evacuation. Good God, man, do you realize... We you... have been landed in the wrong place. We have failed to take any of our objectives. Our men are clinging to chasms and to cliffs. If one part of the line breaks, the Turks will be on the beach in minutes. Only three. Yeah, two got knocked coming up. Names. Richie, Warner, I'm Flanagan. OK, you blokes find Cleary, Harris and Collins. One each, I'll show you the ropes. Get going! What's the matter with you, mate? Someone pinch a bag of lollies or something. You could be handy if you don't get your block knocked off. Okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah. This is like, oh, it's a hell of a fight, but the boys are in the Turkish trenches. Yeah. It's like a mine going mad, uh, running the tunnels and things running all over the place. Uh, just our bloody luck to be a carrying party while the other blokes do all the fighting. Well, that suits me just fine. So you had a long talk to Kate, eh? Hey? Yeah, long enough. That's just what I told you. You'll do the right thing by him, won't you? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Well, you lot generally get what you want. Now, look here. All I was no, doing over... to me. She's my sister and she's got a future. I don't want her headed in the wrong direction, that's all. Yeah, and you mean my direction? Well, it depends on what you got in mind. That's oh, a crazy subject to talk no, about. No, Two bomb carriers, right, Lord of the double. Let's go. Straight up the slap. The sergeant will tell you where to go. Come on, Marty. Besides, I'll come back and haunt you. Be giving any more directions? No. Which way? Let's go. What the hell is happening? I don't know. You stay here, mate. I'll have a squizzy around the corner. Hey, take it easy. Dick, take it easy. I'll be right, mate. a bun. We just answer me next time, huh? I had my hands full. <sighs> Bombs, Marty. Take it easy. <sighs> Keep it going, Marty. Only seconds to the final bell, mate!
You heard, huh? I had to come just in case. <laughs> and I was so close, funny, I looked around. No, I'm not. I've seen as much death as you have. I know how random the chances are. Stop it. Do you hear? be the same, you know. Nothing's going to be the same after all this. Let's all face up to it now. How did you wangle this? Oh, Harry Armstrong, bless him. I have to go back tomorrow. Good. Gives us some time. Everything's measured in hours these days. That gave me a bundle of money to buy up every luxury on the island. <laughs> You've come to the right woman. I have this friendly Greek merchant. No, Martin. It's enough. Evacuation! We are expected to get 40,000 men off Anzac in full sight of the enemy. Well, you're being less than the chatterbox today, White. Come on, man, tell me. Is the British Army expected to slink away like thieves in the night? The quieter the better. I've been working on a feasibility study on how we just might avoid casualties, General. This will need to be good, White. about there's no firing not even any shooting back i don't know rolly i'll tell you what my guess is we're leaving leaving gallipoli or quitting living to fight another day oh come off it marty we can't just pack up and go why not because we don't bloody quit that's why not who said anything about quitting we tried this back door to Germany nonsense and it failed. Time we went in the front door. France. certainly care about their horses, eh?
Watch His Life by Tom Collins. That's one of my favorite books. You one of the fair dinkums? You know, anybody who joined up after the mess of Gallipoli had to be fair dinkum. Oh, I see. Rolly Collins. Wilhelm Schmidt. Pleased to meet you. Jeez, did you hear that? We got a bloody hun here. Ha! Wilhelm Schmidt. How'd you been? A bloke travels 12,000 miles to fight the bludgers and there's one right here with us. Schmidt the spy. <laughs> Come on. This bloke's a fair dinkum, a volunteer like every one of us. Ah, oh, don't give me that. He's getting a train right home. Hey, get off me bloody hands, you mug. Why don't you stand up and say that, soldier? OK, OK, don't get off your bike. It was only having a bit of fun, that's all. Well, keep your mouth shut then, eh? OK. What's your name? Dilly Gord. Dingo, it'd suit him better. Welcome aboard, mate. Name's Flanagan. Pleased to meet you. A good man. Is he one of the originals? Yeah. Well, not really. He joined us as a reinforcement. How many originals are there? Only six out of 40. Martin Barrington, the corporal. Well, he should be an officer, but he won't. I don't know why. Bill Harris. He's a pawn. A bit of a mystery. <laughs> and that's Pat Cleary. He's bulletproof. How do you mean? Well, he's got so many wads of money on him, it's like armor. Oh, and there's Sergeant MacArthur and Mr. Armstrong, except they're traveling first class. And there's me. You were wounded twice, Riley? Most of us got in the way or something. Wilhelm, what's your name and all? Well, what I mean is... You must have thought hard about joining up. My father, who brought us out from Germany, he always taught us that freedom has its price. Well, I'll tell you what, this looks like a fine country to be fighting for. Sure beats Egypt. Oh, it's a beautiful country. Wally. Well, Puddin, if you've got to go, you've got to go, mate. <laughs> Wilhelm? We can't keep calling you Wilhelm. Yeah, it's the same name as the Kaiser. That's what we'll call him. Kaiser. Anyway. <laughs> 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 How'd you know it was my birthday? It's written in your pay book, mate. You told the bloke when you joined up, Put. Did I? Yeah. Anyway, don't worry about it, son. We've got two reasons to celebrate. First time out of the line for months, and your birthday. Right. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> hey. That's a big surprise. <laughs> that okay. sounds all right. Hey. Out of here! Quick, down here. Hey! Oh. Hey! Oh. 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 What we have here, then? Nosy Parkers. You mind your own business or you'll get some of the same. What was he doing, robbing the Bank of England? I only asked the way the knocking shop. And then right. he tried to gain entrance to a blue light house here. What's a blue light mean, Pat? Officer's knock shop. Red lights for the troops. Now, Obby. Listen, uh, why don't we take him back to camp with us, eh? <laughs> We're going to make a few examples of you Australians. You blokes are going the right way to start a riot. That'll be enough from you, laddie. I'll nick you too. Now listen. No, mate, no. No, we don't need trouble. I'll go quietly. <laughs> Better get him out of sight. Are you all right, mate? Yeah. We'll go and nick off. Keep your head down! What about us, then? I reckon we'd better lay low, too. Good idea. Hey, let's not forget what we came for. <laughs> Come on, birthday boy. I'm sorry you cannot come in here. 
Well, that's a shame. Well, that's a Hey, this place is right. Hey, put Get this in here, mate. Tough. I think uh, perhaps we can use the private room. Oh, this stuff tickles your nose, Pat. Mademoiselle Fifi, Mademoiselle Colette, and Mademoiselle Claudine. Are they all for me, Pat? Yeah, happy birthday, Put. <laughs> would have drawn every sniper on Gallipoli. Bayonet! Weapon of the assault! Sergeant! Put on the killing face! Ah, <laughs> God! <laughs> Stand the crows, that's the face that killed his mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> One more remark like that, and you're up on the charge. That man! Stand out here by the bayonet, dummy! Well, I can keep an eye on you. We've been warned about you Australians. Absolutely no discipline. Well, let me tell you, you're not fighting the Turk now. This isn't the Bashe Bazooks. This is a real war against a first-class enemy. But the Hun can't stand cold steel. Sergeant, the final demonstration demonstration, have you? Might have been useful at Waterloo. Up the line, they mostly get used for opening jam tins. Let's have a look at the real queen of the modern battlefield. Number one, load. Number two, load. Number one, ready, sir. Number one, fire. gentlemen, is why there's a continuous trench from the North Sea to the Swiss border. As long as the machine gun's intact, neither side can cross no man's land. Our enemy, the German army, is extremely skillful in their use of it. Their gunners are hand-picked, and they use them like this. front is crisscrossed like that. What's the answer then, sir? Guns? Bombs? Bravery, perhaps. There isn't a real answer. Not yet. Hello? Who's your lady friend? Who's the little girl by your side? When we started our march south of the Somme, everyone was in high spirits. We'd all been told that we were going to join the great battle that was going to win the war. Even the old hands who might have reason to know better were caught up in the mood. We'd heard the guns a long way off. Well, they'd been going non-stop for three weeks and we were pretty sure that old Fritz must be really knocked about by now. The village they wanted us to take couldn't be much of a problem, sure. That was our last day of innocence. Hello, hello, stop your little games. Don't you think you 
into the trench. Ducky. Looks like we're stuck here. The Germans have got a beat on us every time we stick up our bloody heads. Corporal, we'll take a party of five men and bomb back down the trench behind the enemy. Your objective is to assist the 4th Battalion to bring up the flank. Sir? Cover! Let's go. Bannigan, cover front. Gooden, cover rear. From you, from here. Germans, lots of them, back in the next bay. Come put. Touch us. I can make it to that machine gun post I just knocked out. I should be able to drop bombs right on it. Don't be stupid, mate. There's bloody lead flying in all directions up there. Fritz does it. Get hey, your what choice have we state. got? We've got to get up over the top. All right, you're the boss. Yeah. Hood, give us a leg up. In. See anything blue?
No, we are not going back up the line, Dingo. Even the powers that be feel that nine months straight is enough. They have declared leave for the whole battalion. Blighty leave. All right, lads, promotion list. Not this time, Paddy. The Colonel has recommended that Corporal Barrington be commissioned in the field. Until the commission comes through, you'll be acting platoon sergeant. Colonel Barry. Officer Barrington, eh? Lance Corporal Flanagan. We'll go to court. Sir? Aye, it's my Corporal Flanagan. Private Schmidt. We'll go to Lance Corporal. Good on you, Kaiser. Good on you, Mr. Armstrong, uh, what about you, sir? Oh, yes, I almost forgot. I've been promoted to captain and will take charge of the company. Hey, good on you, sir. Thanks, Bill. Great. Cheers, lads. Hi, ladies. <laughs> What's one, Mademoiselle? Mademoiselle? Oh, Smeared, isn't it? You notice there's not many blokes around? It's the war, mate, the war. You know, all the more shearless for us, eh? Hey, a couple of this. You two men, stand fast there. Don't you salute in your army? Not a lot. Well, we used to, but we're trying to give it up. <laughs> Gathering uh, here tonight. It's the beat, the some um, recitation. And who better to re recitate at you than your, your old mate Lance Corporal Cleary? <laughs> uh, bit of a strong poetry, so I'll put the right out on respect. Uh, right, um, the bastard from the bush. <laughs> Heard it before, have you? As dusk was slowly settling over city, town and bush, this joke had come to see us. He wanted to join the push. 
<laughs> would, would you let a woman keep you? Would you, would you give up work for good? Would I let a woman keep me? You get him off. Right. <laughs> and now, the 15th Brigade football team chorus. Punchy Ellis, he put two blokes in hospital last game. That's the mug. Punchy Ellis, yeah! In the you know we mug. Punchy Ellis, always ready to shave your leg, right? <laughs> It's good rough shooting country around here. The king could be interested. What's in the diary today, Kiko? Oh, there's that long cable from Marshal Joffrey asking for details of the Somme offensive. He wants an early start. Tiresome, man. Well, we no longer have to pull chestnuts out of the fire for the frogs. Perhaps we can fight on ground of our own choosing. Eep, next year. Anything else? Uh, Mr. Murdoch this afternoon. Who's he again? An Australian newspaper man. He's An some... Australian and a newspaper man. That's doubly unfortunate. He's some sort of informal representative of the Australian Prime Minister. I really don't need to be reminded that the Australians are in France. There have already been reports of thefts, disorder in the back areas, and South Africa all over again. South Africa? Yes, the colonial hooligans. We're going to pack them off home then. And did you, sir? They were useful against the Boer commander. Same sort of ragamuffin mentality. We shot a couple, as I remember. Yes, so we did. Probably have to do the same again. I'm afraid not, sir. After that affair, the Australians abolished the death penalty in their army. The devil they did. Well, we'll have to change that. Make a note that I raised the matter with this Murdoch fellow. Right, sir. If not Kigel, we must blood him as soon as possible. Some should be ideal. Quieten him down. Thanks, Louis. Thanks, Ruth. You have a good leave? Hi, oh, fellas. How's your leave, eh? Hey. Fine. Give us a beer and a uh, cider, please, love. Oh, I'll make that double, boys. I'll be paying. <laughs> you look like a dog with two tails. Uh, he has to complain. I wouldn't, eh? Here. Where's Pat? He took an extra day, mate. He met an old friend. Oh, there's trouble. Nothing he can't pay for. Huh? <laughs> I have to go. Oh, no. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Silly thing to say. I love you. My name is Young. Who might you be? Harold Armstrong, 
These are letters. I didn't expect to find you still here. The Colonel asked me to hand over personally. Hand over? What the hell's going on, Harry? And who are you, Lieutenant? Barrington. Ah. What battalion are you from? Not a battalion. The Australian training unit on Salisbury Plain. Training unit. Martin. Captain Young is my replacement. You will accord him all respect. <laughs> Damn it, Harry. You know, after all you've bloody well been through, they just can't send you away like it. Piece of worn machinery. It's a medical decision, Martin. I've been boarded unfit. Disturbed action of the heart. D-A-H. Erratic heartbeat. High pulse rate, general debilitation. Starts in the mind, they tell me. Listen, I know what DAH is. Uh, Martin, please, just accept it. It's final. Now, they don't know what causes it, and unfortunately, they can't kill it. Yeah. Hey, Skipper, what's going on? I reckon they're going to take you away or something. Right, so, Pat. Yeah, is there anything we can do, sir? I wish to God there was, funny. Look after yourself. Yeah, thank you. Now, uh, listen now, Skipper, as you're leaving, this coat of yours, you won't oh, be bloody clear. Right, well, you're missing uh, me, will you, Skipper? Let's call it quick for the time being, huh? Yeah. yeah. Come on, fellas. Discipline is the thread that binds a military organisation together. Do I make myself clear? Discipline, do you hear me? You not only couldn't spell it, you obviously have no notion of what the word means. Look at you! I'm not impressed by old soldiers who fumble their way through a few battles. From now on, we go by the rules. By the book, which was written by cleverer men than you. And if not, by the punishment clauses of the Army Act. Do I make myself clear? You'll get us all killed, Bill. Until you are fit for me to lead you into the great battle which is about to commence. From now on, there will be no Christian names. Your Tom, Dicks and Harrys will be lieutenants, sergeants and corporals, as laid down. The old sloppy ways departed in the car ten minutes ago. Do I make myself clear? I go tickle your ass with a feather. <laughs> what did that man say? What did he say? He said particularly nasty weather. Did you say that? No, I didn't say that. I just said what he said. Who said it then? Well, I don't know. Someone behind me somewhere. Well, who gave you permission to speak? You did. You said, what did he say? And I said... Silence! He... I was just trying to say what he said. Start and start this man. What with, sir? With saying the nice... No, with insolence, damn it! Take this rebel and give them two hours close order drill! Sir! Kennedy! One to the left! 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 By the left! Weak, left, right, left, right, shoulders back. Mr. Murdoch, sir, from Australia. Good afternoon, General. Hey, Mr. Murdoch, I wondered where I'd heard your name. You were the man mixed up in that Gallipoli report. I thought it my duty to forward responsible opinions, General. Mm. Perhaps journalism has its uses. It put an end to that abominable sideshow. The war must be fought here in France. This is where the German army must be brought to battle and bled white. And we need every man to do it. And not be sidetracked by politicians and strategic amateurs. I agree, General. I trust this interview is not going to result in a newspaper article. No, sir. My Prime Minister asked me to call and express his admiration and best wishes in the onerous responsibilities you have before you. Thank him for me. Anything else? He did ask me to um, raise with you the possibility of all five Australian divisions being grouped together under their own command, uh, like the Canadians. Out of the question. I will not have my hands tied as to where I can dispose of them. It is a matter which both the Prime Minister and the Australian public feel very keenly about. But I remind you, Mr Murdoch, that you are a small country. And your army is less than 10% of the British forces in France. 
And not in significant force, I hope. We shall see. They have as yet to prove themselves against a first-class enemy. Meanwhile, it grieves me to say they are creating legal and disciplinary problems out of all proportion to their numbers. Perhaps under their own command. Furthermore, I'd like you to convey to your Prime Minister in the strongest terms the urgent need to reintroduce the death penalty. The Australian people would never again hand the power of life and death to a British court martial. The maintenance of discipline must take precedence over national feeding. Agreed, if that's what's at stake. But our men are all volunteers, the kind more easily led than driven. A dubious distinction. I don't see how volunteerism can replace the normal wastage, let alone losses in a major battle. Normal wastage? About 5,000 a day across the whole front. However, this trench deadlock may soon be a thing of the past. I am preparing the greatest blow of this war. I'll put 20 British divisions against the German line, and God willing, we will break through and set the cavalry loose. It may soon be over. The big push for 1917 had started nearly two months ago near a place called Ypres. Whatever the high command lacked, it wasn't guns. The whole area was devastated. The offensive had bogged down with both the Tommies and Fritz taking a dreadful hiding. Now it was our turn. How long to the op over, sir? About 20 minutes, Bill. G'day, Pat. Bud. Success. All objectives taken and old Fritz was left groggy on the ropes. Some of us even thought the end might be in sight. As we found out later, it would have been better if we'd failed. to keep going. No, we must get a message back to battalion. There may be other attacks. We'll dig in here. Captain Young, it's quite clear what's happened. Now, the Germans by a fluke have attacked the same time as us. Now, our barrage is getting away from us. We can't stop here. No! I'm in command of this company. If we fall hard, you'll risk any more movements. Anybody disobeying will be charged with mutiny. Anyone see that? See what? I guess you're it now, mate. Look after the platoon. Right. Tim, drag this poor bloke into cover and get his maps and clears. Company, advance! Find the barrage! Uh, your report to the Prime Minister, General. Great. My dear Prime Minister, it gives me great pleasure to inform you of the sweeping success of our latest blow struck across the Menin Road. 
And it gives me even greater pleasure to imagine the expression on that Welsh conniver's face when he reads this. Now, if the clink can do it, there's gaps in the wire. Hope so. Then we get a whiff out on the right. Go over here, down. Louis, up to the right, mate. There's a gap in the wire. Cover when I yell. Bill? Yep. On the belt. There's a gap on the left, mate. All right, Rolly, we're coming down! Go! Jones and Perkins will get back. McGill's a goner. He's having an escort for this bunch. Bill Hannigan, check the rear. Flanagan, you're a bloody marvel. You and the men. Martin! <laughs> Easy, Ron. Easy. You're now company commander, Mr. Earnshaw. <sighs> that hadn't occurred to me. Look, the men would rather have you. You're the only officer left. <sighs> Come on, Max. Boys will follow you. Very well. Sergeant, you are now second in command, so appoint new platoon commanders as is necessary. Right. You know, I reckon 
this is traffic breaking through if the heads keep going at it? I don't think so. Why not? The Germans' old allies arrived. General Mudd. This whole area used to be a swamp. They drained it during the Middle Ages, but it'll revert back to being a swamp just as soon as this winter rain sets in. Oh, Christ. First bloody time we get the edge on Fritz and the damn heads thrown away by having the battle in a bloody fog, eh? Brains are in their asses, Max. Sergeant, put on you, mate. Your privilege, sir. Success signal. Two greens, isn't it? Two greens. Question of moving. No. There'll be a little point. He's coming out of the anaesthetic. Morphine. It may be kinder. And who might you be? Sister Baker, First Australian General Hospital. You're a long way from home. A friend. Yes, sir. Excuse me, please. No. No more morphine. Sister, remember where you are. No more morphine, ma'am. You must understand, sister. Morphine is our only defense against pain. Withdrawal of that may condemn your friend to a great deal of it. Yes, sir, but I think that's better than him falling into a sleep that he won't wake up from. In some cases, that may be the more merciful course. Let me try, sir. Please. Very well. You may stay with him. Doctor, this is highly irregular. The nature of this whole damn war is highly irregular. If we have a faint chance of saving one life by irregularity, then we should try. Thank you, Doctor. Can you hear me? Martin, I want you to open your eyes and look at me. <coughs> Come on, Martin. Martin, just try and open your eyes the once.
Please, Maud. I don't want to get you to see. I know precisely what you want, and this behaviour must stop forthwith. Take it off your bike, missus. Missus? Return at once to your ward, or I'll put you in charge of the military police. Blimey. I've never been in charge of anything in my life. Oh, since they arrived, this hospital has been sheer bedlam. And it's getting worse. Absolutely reprehensible. Well, Sister Baker, I didn't expect to see you here again. We don't seem to have much trouble with you, ma'am. No. Ah, oh, but then you're Australian, too, aren't you? In any case, visiting hours are over. The hospital boat train leaves in ten minutes. Out, please, go out. Out you go. Oh, hang on, leave this to me, boys. The clearing jam. Uh, excuse us, uh, Mum, Mrs. Uh, oh, oh Mum. Yeah, I know it's after visit now, isn't it? But we just wanted to come and see our mate, and you look like a bit of a sport. Uh, <laughs> Colonel! Colonel! What's wrong with it? My stitches. If I survive you blokes, I'm bound to beat the guys in England. Yeah, it'd be the nurses I'd be worried about. Yeah. <laughs> Any word on Max? He's fine, mate. It's mm. just a bit of eye trouble. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Congratulations. Well, thanks, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah, a bit of big brass with us now. Yeah. He's having lessons this week on how to eat with a knife and fork. <laughs> you can tell by the pot marks around his mouth. <laughs> well, I beg your pardon, sir. We'd best be going. The, the matron seems a bit upset. <laughs> yeah, well, um, we we'll just like a, a minute or so with our mate. <laughs> Ah, uh, the originals. The class of 1914. Uh, uh, not me, remember. I was a Gallipoli reinforcement. Oh, yes, a bloody new chum, that's right. Well, see you back in Aussie, Monty. Oh, I don't know. I might get this old wing back together in England. Oh, we've talked about that. You can go home now. You've earned it. Yeah, you go and uh, dust off the red carpet for when we come visiting, you know, when this nonsense is over. <laughs> yeah, all yeah, together. Right. All right, sir. Medicine, Don't drink it all at once. Wait for me at home, Marty. Do we should bloody well toll for a change. You know what you did for him, love. I miss him like blazes. Captain Young states in his report that someone, most probably you, struck him unconscious in an unprovoked attack during the Battle of Brutzi and Ridge. What have you to say? It was dark, sir, and a lot was happening. I know what it was like. Have you anything else to add? No, sir. The regimental sergeant major questioned a score of soldiers who would have been in plain view of the incident. Not one of them saw anything. Do you find that amusing, Flanagan? No, sir. Captain Young, it now remains for me to decide what action to take in regard to Sergeant Funnigan. Please withdraw to the adjutant's office. Certainly, sir. You know that the maintenance of discipline must always be a paramount aim of the Army. Yes, sir. And that relations between officers and other ranks is the key concern of military law. And the breaches of this law attract the harshest penalties. Do you know why this should be so, Sergeant? I hope you do. Without these constraints, an army would only be an armed rabble. There's not mere theory, Sergeant. There have been reports of unarmed German prisoners apparently shot dead behind Australian lines. I understand, sir. Then why? I did what I thought was right at the time. I still think it was, sir. I have here a recommendation for an award for gallantry signed by the adjutant. It concerns your attack on Pilvox Emma and your steadiness in consolidating the company on its final objective. There can be no thought affording it now. Get out. Sergeant, you know and I know that you should be court-martialed, but that's impossible. You've got brains, Flanagan, you know why. Firstly, you could call 50 of the best soldiers as witnesses to testify for you. Captain Young could call none. Secondly, it would appear that the authorities had brought over to France a man incompetent to command men in battle. There'd be no way of suppressing a scandal. Now go, before I change my mind. Sir. 
Since there's no black mark on your conduct sheet, you may as well have these. And if you ever come before me again, I'll cut you off at the Crown Jewels. Well, is the old man going to court martial you? No, mate. Worse than that. Maybe we can buy your way out of them, mate. What they did was make me an officer. Hey, I'll scrape you the bottom of the barrel. Just as well we got a navy. <laughs> Wangle the weekend's leave. Good, good. How is it? Ah, it'll be all right. I just had to see you before you sailed. Colonel Legg says he can have you on a boat home in three weeks. Yeah, <clears throat> well, love, uh, I'm not going to Australia. What? I'm seeing Keith Murdoch about a staff job. You promised me you'd go home. You promised me. Yeah, I know, but, you know, when I thought about it, I mean, all things considered, I'm not in bad shape. The manager's staff job. You're a liar. You're a bloody liar. You've got a chance to go home. A lot of men would envy you that. Bob, I can't go back. You're not to listen to either. You know, it's only my arm out of action, not my brain. I can be of some use here. You really want to be with the boys, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. I don't know a damn thing about you anymore. <laughs> How can you say that? Well, when I came here, you didn't kiss me. You didn't even hey, say hello. What are you talking about? That's right for the war. We've got to finish it first. By we, you mean you, personally. Maybe I do, I mean. I don't know anymore. I've been fighting for three and a half years now. Just like me. Kate, I've got to go back. I've got to see this through. Go then. Shove off and play soldiers. Go to hell, Marty. Who's in then? Oh, now this is what I call a war. Me too. Keep it like this, and I'm in for life. Boys? Morning, oh, Skip. You all right, Wood? Yeah. Why's he working? Oh, he's skin. And we're paying him sixpence an hour. Sixpence? <laughs> all right, then ninepence. Anyway, it's the uh, chain of command. Oh. Bet he hasn't even had a drink. Neither have I for that matter. Oi. You're worse than the bloody overseers. Anyway, you're an officer. Very true, Lance Corporal, and by all rights, I should be putting you to work, mate. Huh. Tough. I thought you were going to an officer's training course at Amy Enns. So I am, after we finish the water bottle, that is. Any more? No, thanks. Nope. Uh, pay 20s. Pay me! And about bleeding time! <laughs> Why is it all so peaceful, do you think? Maybe Fritz has run out of ideas. Well, that'll be the day. I wonder if he's up to something. They're keeping very quiet about it if they are. Right, our generals are going. It'll take them six months to put the British Army back together again after Passchendaele. <laughs> Better to keep it this way. Play cards and wait for our pension. Yeah, we were saying that in Gallipoli. Three bloody years ago. Hmm. Long time away from home. Shh! What is it? I listen. Up there. Yep. 
And this is what I call a war. You're asking a hell of a lot, you know. Well, I think I deserve it. I signed on for the duration, after all. Well, I'm gonna need a damn good reason. If there's one thing that the troops hate, more than Fritz and the weather, it's a staff. I mean, not your divisional men, but those champagne sippers up at high headquarters. I mean, the troops see their greatest threat as coming from these incompetent base officers who understand nothing of the fighting man's needs. Now, if I was to become a staff officer, I mightn't be able to change much as a junior, but I could sure as hell protest against schemes which are downright bloody murder. I mean, believe me, the situation's beyond a joke. Some British units have openly stated that they'd rather shoot at the staff than Fritz. In the French Army, the staff officers are no longer going to wear their armbands. I see what you mean. Look, I'm going to tell you something, and this is most confidential. The five Australian divisions are to be unified, finally, under their own command. Really? We've been arguing with Haig for two years for this, for the right to fight alongside our own. So, who gets command? Well, hopefully White, maybe Birdwood, and Molash as his supporters. Well, uh, I don't suppose you could get me a posting with one. Oh, Monash, perhaps. His third division's taken some pretty heavy knocks. I mean, the man's a good enough administrator, or so I hear. It might be the best I can do for you. It was now the new year, and the North European winter descended on the battlefield. The battlefield turned into a moonscape by a million shells. This desolate place marked where 300,000 British soldiers fell for the gain of a few miles. The guns were mostly silent now, except for an occasional burst of hate. The soldiers' energies were concentrated on battling those old foes. Rain and cold. Also buried here were illusions and false hopes for a quick end to the war. Two mighty armies faced each other over a few yards of muddy ground in a paralyzing stalemate. And while generals in warm chateaus puzzled to find an answer, the frontline soldiers were united in a common misery. Oh, another week of this and we souvenirs won't fix nothing. Man will be ruined. Any sign of relief yet, mate? No. We're due ten hours ago. Right, Bill? There's this beautiful dusky maiden in a grass skirt walking up the beach from the coral reef, carrying two of the biggest trout I ever saw. When I open my eyes, what do I see? Bloody Flanagan. Hell of a time to be thinking of a fish dinner, mate. Who said I was thinking of a feed? <laughs> You've got to look after yourself, Bill. <coughs> Nick off. It only hurts when I laugh. Did you hear? Canadians on our left took Passchendaele yesterday. Hooray. Oh, come on, mate. It was a bloody good effort. What for? We've shot our boat. A blind man would know it. All we've done is create a bog 12 miles wide behind us. Guns can't get up. Or supplies. No guns, no vaults. We just about had it one, eh? Yeah. Fritz is laughing at us now. Him in green fields and we're stuck here in the mud. Nothing changes. Any news of Dinger? No. I reckon he shot through for good. And I don't reckon he'd have bothered taking those German prisoners all the way back either. Broly, could have gone back and had that redressed, you know. No, thanks, Sarge. Probably be drowned if I tried to get back by myself. Won't be long now, mate. Hey, Sarge. Yeah. Is it true they're going to bring boats in and row us here? Who told you that, Wood? Look, next time anyone tells you something, make sure they cross their heart first, all right? Eighth Australian Battalion. They turned our buckle. He slacks. Where the hell are you been, Chum? Where's the officer? I admit. I asked where you've been, you're ten hours late. But he wouldn't believe it. The staff officer bloke says it's one and a half hours to come up. But I can tell you, 
We've been 11 hours on the go. My lads have done up. Then they got here. Welcome aboard, Mr. Arbuckle. Name's Flanagan. Follow me and I'll show you around. See if I can get hold of a strong drink for you and your men. It'll be greatly appreciated. Shove you right back in. General Kegel, Chief of Staff to General Haig. Don't get his car muddy, will you? and the men to fight in this. The first staff officer jumped right over the second staff officer's back. The second staff officer jumped right over the first staff officer's back. The first staff officer jumped right over the second staff officer's back. The second staff officer jumped right over the first staff officer's back. They were only playing leapfrog. They were only playing... Hey! Oh, thought you was a looter, sir. Or a prince, sir. <laughs> Germans that close, are they? They're all over the place, sir. Looks like it could be the big breakthrough this time. Army ends could go any time. You know where the Australian divisions are? Pray not, sir. I'll ask inside. Uh, sir, place is empty. Officers have gone. Where are you going? Back to Calais Base HQ, sir. We could, uh, we could give you a lift if you like. No, thanks. I'm going the other way. Get that junk out of the car. Don't you obey orders in the British Army? Gear up, lads. It's not your fault. That's not what the Colonel will say. Uh -huh. Tell you what, I'll give you a receipt for the car and for one bottle of brandy. Thank you very much, sir. That'll do nicely. Very hot on paperwork, it's the Colonel, sir. Very hot. Gentlemen, the dress standards of this headquarters are declining. I must have a word to the chief of staff. The British are already half convinced we're all bush ranchers, and I hear you've been running a private army of Tommies. How were they? Good men, sir. Only some of their top brass were 
Well, there's a quotation from Napoleon that covers it. There's no such thing as a bad soldier, only bad officers, eh? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a pity about the British. They draw their officers from a narrow social class. Oh, some of them are good. But in a war like this, there's not enough of those to go round. It's cost them dearly. Now, Barrington, you assaulted me on the basis of your brains. It's about time we put that to the test. Now, look here. We've given the Germans a bloody nose right there. Temporarily. They still outnumber us four to one, but if we can keep them unsettled for, say, 48 hours, there'll be time to bring up the extra Australian divisions. I tend to do this with a series of local counterattacks. I want you to do a study of the ground where we can achieve the greatest success at the smallest cost. Have the appreciation in front of me in three hours. Sir. Are we this time, Kaiser? Hasebrook. The officers are getting down for a stretch. Oh, I suppose they need to. Must have stiff backsides, riding around all day on them big fat cushions, eh? There's a pommy officer coming to speak to them. Brass hat. Gentlemen, I am instructed to inform you that the expected German attack in the north has commenced. Bloody hell, Flanagan was right. Yeah, he's always bloody right when he says we'll get shot at. Amontier has already fallen. The enemy are pushing hard against Calais and Dieppe. If they succeed, we will be cut off from Great Britain. I am further instructed to inform you that the 1st Australian Division is the only formed body of troops between here and the Channel Ports. So, it's all up to you. Good luck. You bloody need it, mate. That's a shot. OK, everybody out. All right, roll up, roll up. It's on again. It seems funny going off to fight with that Marty, doesn't it? Ah, uh, he's better off where he is, Rolly. Where is Marty, anyway? Where the staff always are, tucked up in some shadow with a bottle of champagne for a nightcap. Martin Barrington, the word from on high, Captain, you can knock this foreign legion off. Sir, we're only men. Heaven for it's a nasty shock, and so the brigade's about to move forward. You've been stood down. With many thanks. Hold, there's a verbal message, too. Uh, a certain general wants a certain captain back on his staff again. Too sweet. Back to being a staff officer. Well, at least you'll be able to tell your kids what you did in the Great War, sir. <laughs> what about you? Uh, don't worry about me, sir. I'm regular. I'm here because you... I'm here. As they say, sir. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, sir. I wish I was going with you. Off you go. I'll look after them. There's a stragglers collection point further down the road. They're not stragglers. They're some of the best men I've ever fought. Sorry. Them. I'll look after them, right? There's a place like this between Ballarat and Dalesford. There's bugger all between Ballarat and Dalesford. There's a place just like this up on the Wimmera. Yeah, I know the place. It's near Natamuck. Well, this is exactly the same. Yeah, only the Wimmera is full of gum trees and dust. There's not much grass there. And the air's chocker with parakeets and galahs, and all you can hear is cicadas. And the smell's different, and the light's different, because up there the sun's a big orange bastard. It takes about an hour and a half to set. And, of course, you don't have Germans charging through your fence every 20 or 30 years. Yeah, but aside from that, Pat, you've got to admit it's bloody like a Wimmera. Oh, 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 
beautiful, isn't it, Smithy? Not a sign of wire or mud. Do me, mate. Yeah, I feel like a kid on my first Sunday school picnic. What, you're not worried about what might happen? Worried? Pay me six bob a day for this. They make all my decisions. Provide free transport to the appointed place and throw in three meals a day. Now, you compare this to humping a swag around the outback, under the blazing sun, 100 miles between pubs, nothing but the crows for track mates. Good, I miss it. <laughs> you got a good field of fire? You got fields of fire to burn. Never seen so many fields of fire. All we need is a few guns to fire, mate. So I'll major to you. Wanna watch this one? He's a stickler for the rules. Still got a bit of pom in him. Right. They're these branches. I want them laid on top so none of this fresh soil shows. Now, the secret of this sort of scattered defence, camouflage and concealment. That's right. Now, Bluey's post is over there. Whereabouts, Bill? I can't see it, mate. You're not supposed to see it. Neither is Fritz. Now, Bluey can cover your front and you can cover his if need be, OK? It's called mutual support. What the hell's happened, Cleary? You pinched somebody's field manual? Nah, I'd never admit to being a pro, but you know, some of it rubs off on you after a while. You know, like a lump of shit. Don't say it! Just dig! Hey, you were a bait layer in your time, weren't you? Oh, yeah. I ain't one to brag, but I was voted best cheerers cook at Big Willander and Kadinji. Good. As soon as you're dug in, you can report to company headquarters. You just officially become Chief Spud Barber. <laughs> never trust the bastards once they get a bit of a prank. More branches on the left flank. Hey, sir, Major. Where do you think you're going? Come here. Into that line. Move! Straggler collecting point over there. Now, the only thing back there is the English Channel. We stay in here. Move, son. Oi. Thought you were spud bashing. Ah, oh, I had an assistant. Now look what I found. So what? Now, if they had someone in them, well, uh... Mate, they're silk. You beauty, Pat! Ha-ha! <laughs> sure colour, Blue. Can we get a postcard and send it back to her, Bill? There <laughs> <laughs> we go. It's a bit of a funny time for playing dress-ups, isn't it? Get into them, Dopey. They're silk. The only thing lice won't live in. Hey, uh, look! Yeah, the dumbest stuff up there. They must have had a hair on that bloke. Yeah. Yeah, and a dirty old bugger as well. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Who's in charge here? Give her. I am, sir. You're going to make a fight of it, lad? Yes, sir. Good man. Get me a rifle. Sir, you can't go into the line. You haven't got time to argue with me, Lieutenant. Pat, get the Colonel a rifle and show him your position. Stand to! Stand to! Move! Oh. In there, mate. That, uh, sir.
way they'll come this time. I don't know. But they won't hit the same place. Just ask the question. Let's do it. Good luck. I've got to warn you about taking this war on by yourself. Say, would you uh, care for a mouthful of brandy? It's uh, very civil of you, mate, uh, Colonel. Yes. Thank you. Notify HQ near defense successful. Right, and another number two from Louis. Good job, boys. Good day. Got any target to spare you, bloke? You buggers get out of here. We'll look after the food. We fight and you eat. That's a piss poor arrangement. Where are the rations? There should be rations in here. Hey, Rolly, come and have a look at this. What's it say, mate? Hey, listen to this. Who is it, Rolly? Order of the day, 11th of April, 1918. From the Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sir Douglas Haig. Yeah, it's from Haig. There is no other course open to us but to fight it out. With our backs to the wall, and believing in the justice of our cause, each one of us must fight to the end. Backs Between against the bloody wall, wall. that's bullshit. Been living in shadows too long. What are you doing bringing us this stuff? Is that all the welcome I get? How long have you got? Till tomorrow. I can arrange it. Matron owes me a favour. Just give me five minutes to get changed. And then the long lunch. It's a French custom, among other things. Anyway, that's enough of my repetitive hospital routine. Tell me what you've been doing these last weeks. Oh, you know. Usual stuff, officer stuff. How many sets of underwear does the bath unit need per man, per liar. day? Liar. I said liar. All right, I heard you. A group of wounded Tommies turned up. 
in a car with a chit signed by Captain Barrington. How did they? And furthermore, they told me about this Australian officer who was digging in for some mad last-ditch stand. Oh, what are you, a perpetual schoolboy? Kate, I only tried to When help. you pulled strings to stay in France, you said you were going to be safe, on staff. You are frightening the daylights out of me by being right up... Stop. self-respect. Men are worth looking for someone to focus their courage. Now, what would you expect me to walk out on that? Bloody hell. There's going to be more unprincipled men left alive at the end of this war than the other kind. So? So why should my man be one oh, of... yours, huh? Yes, mine until a more cynical generation comes along. Thank you very, very much. So help me, I think I'm stuck in the old-fashioned kind. C'est la guerre. C'est la ferie. Bloody gross. These Yanks money just got it. Mm -hmm. I look as if they bought the place. Come on in, I'm feeling lucky. Got the dice, got them right here. Let's go. Okay, guys, who wants some action? Wait, did you nothing? Come on, six. Yes! Three hundred thousand! Come on, come on. Crap. Ah, come on. Is that a gambling guy? Yep. Some money? What do you think this is? Grapefruit? Oh. Oh. Can I play? You got any money? Oh, I got a bit. Sir! <laughs> you are surely welcome. Thank you very much. That'll fix him. Come on. Dead right, Puddin. And when he's taken all their money, they'll have to go home, won't they? Where do you reckon we're heading? Oh, I don't know. That's a question I give up asking the army years ago for me peace of mind. Jeez, this countryside. Yeah, I know. It's like the bloody Wimmera. What happened to you? Drop two bob and find sixpence. And your mate. Mr. Flanagan. Mm. Tell this young buck where you think we're going, will you? So we can all get some peace. Well, the best furphy I've got is that we're headed south to the Somme. Yeah, you happy now? What's the matter, mate? Oh, I don't know. It's the weather. I don't suppose it'd be the, um, the whereabouts of the estaminet stocks and profits, would it? Picked it in one. Oh, mate, it was a gold mine. Yeah, well... Yeah, and beside that, we've 
Worried about the girls, too. Oh, I don't reckon they'll be that far behind us, mate. Maybe figure that out. Well, this is the first time all the Aussie divisions are going to be together in one camp. So? So is Madame going to stay north with the Tommies and get a shilling a day? Or is she going to follow the six bob a day warrior south, eh? She's no dummy. That's right. I'm back in business. You bet. You were slipping there for a minute, Pat. Must be your old age, mate. Oh, senility. <laughs> I feel great. Hey, Bluey, give us a bit of a song, mate. <laughs> <laughs> ah, bugger it. I'll sing one myself. <clears throat> oh, God. Up to me waist in water, up, up to your, your eyes in slush. Using the kind of language that makes Sergeant Dush. Who would join the army, army? That's what we all inquire. And so we pity the poor civilian sitting by the fire. Oh, 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 it's a lovely war. Sort of some of them grenades there, will you put? Here's me old granddad's suit. Worry well, he never made the family fortune. What did Dad say? I don't know, like you, son, I never met him. <laughs> Where are you going, mate? Oh, just going to have a look around. The Germans are over that way, Pat. Yeah, so are the souvenirs, mate, and souvenirs mean money. Yeah, but Fritz will get Yeah, you. but I've got to get a bank roll, haven't I, if I'm going to win back all that money I lost at Kraps. Listen, Pat, if Bill finds out about... Shh. Anyone dobs me in, they're on 10% interest. for getting stuck into the slops, isn't it, boys? Nah. Always a pleasure to deal with old soldiers. They know the score. Anyone speak English? Yeah, a little. Good. And tell me, do you blokes always start out the day with a champagne breakfast? <laughs> breakfast? We like you to get dinner. We have come here from the field kitchen. Our cook, <laughs> our cook has nothing but black bread. Such bread. Hey. Slowly, Fritz. Hans. OK. Hands. It's half timber, nine. So... Sawdust. Yeah. Oh, what else is in it? <laughs> anyway, where you blokes are going, there's lots of tucker. Yeah. Food. Have you bully beef? Crikey, you must be starving. Yeah, tons of it. Hey, flies. Hey, Ethan, bully beef. Anyway, let's get going. Ah, uh, hang on. No point in leaving the plonk. Grab four bottles each. Fair class, now that. Rowley! Rowley! What is it, mate? There's something out there. Hang Just be 
been shunting me up and down the paddock all day on my walking barrage. Where'd you get down here? Uh, yesterday, old mob has come down to help train these yanks. Hey, they're keen as mustard too. Remind me of myself in 1914. <laughs> you? Oh, well, the others then. Hey, something big in the wind? Yeah, yeah, big enough. Uh, every time I've heard that in the last three years, we've ended up up the well-known creek in a barbed wire canoe. No, yeah, well, not this time. In any case, you blokes won't be in it. Music to me ears. Hey, when are you coming to see us? As soon as the boss lets me. Captain Barrington. Who's that? The boss. Right, you better be off. Good to see, see you, buddy. Come on. Come on, you driver. Right, now this is the Arrowhead Formation. Very handy in advancing across open country while still affording some flank protection. Now the Lewis gun is placed on the open flank, or high ground. Look at him. He looks like a staff officer, too. Feel funny! Guys, put hell on him. Strike me, eh? Flash Jack from Gundagai. Right. Stand fast! Carry on, Lieutenant. I'm not used to seeing my staff officers greeted so affectionately. <laughs> my old platoon, sir. Well, they obviously haven't forgotten you. No, sir. I don't suppose I could just We're see too them. busy, Barrington. Yes, sir. You'll have a copy of the timings for the tank night march to the start line? Yes, sir. Also a schedule of overhead flights to cover the noise. I want you to go over every inch of their route, recheck all timings down to the second, and have it on General Blamey's desk tomorrow first thing. Yes, sir. the 60 out. You know me, and I know most of you. In the ranks, I see a few faces. Pathetically few. Of the men who fought their way up the gullies of Anzac with the old eight. I see men who were carried from the ditches at Fomel, who refused to give up even when the battalion was almost wiped out. I see others who survived the terrible storm of fire on the Somme and at Bullecourt. But most of all, I see the battalion that was one of the victors of Villers Bretonneau. When, in the darkest days of the war, you snatched victory out of defeat and fostered hope in the face of despair. You're an example to all the Allied armies. You are a living history of the deeds of the Anzacs. You put Australia's name before the world. In a moment, I'm going to give you an order. And I want you to think carefully what you are going to do. Now, you all know me well enough to know that I have never begged anything of you. I will not do so now. But I will ask you to think of Australia and the Anzacs. Our name is feared and respected on both sides of the line. You must do nothing to tarnish it now. The war is approaching its climax. The end is in sight. Let's finish it together. Battalion! Yes, please! Step out the place! Down the bloody crows. What are we, back horses or race horses? There's not too many thoroughbreds around here, Pat. Not in front of me, there ain't. Yo, Kate. We were finally in open country. The trenches and the mud were left far behind us. This suited the diggers down to the ground and they went at it with all their might. It soon became clear that we dealt old Fritz a knockout blow. A lot of them surrendered, but some, particularly the machine gunners, fought to the last. Later we heard that the German chief Ludendorff declared that this battle was the black day of the German army. The day in which they lost the war. Now far to the front, digger. Another five miles. Five miles? Yeah, went through old Fritz like a packet of salts. Five miles in one day. What's this war coming to? 
Yeah, and to think that it took nearly six months to take passion to. Yeah, you didn't have to run five miles to buy into a fight back then. Yeah, put the muzzle cover on. You'll need all your breath. He has been bashed from behind. Easy, mate. Have I taken a shot? Da haven't we in a lady? They wanted to surrender, but the corporal kept shooting. I had to stop him. Okay. Move on! Hold up! Let's not get Schnell! We won't be going anywhere with those buggers up there, mate. We'll have to knock them. It's going to be expensive. Taking 20% casualties already. That's what we get paid for, mate. Hmm. I reckon the two old stages would leave this one. Tara, go left! Sit down! That's right, Bill. Right. Don't leave me, Mama!
you, mate. That last one was game, eh? Yeah, you nearly took my head off. You rode, huh? Hell, you didn't expect me to walk all this way to take command of the company, did you? Congratulations, mate. The old hand's okay, huh? So far. The company's all yours, sir. Thank you. Carry on, Mr. Flanagan. And look after that platoon of reprobates. What's going on? It's the Great War, mate. It's in all the papers. Thanks. Help! found out. Oh, it's only a mouthful of that Blue Cross gas. But I must say, it's been a nice week's rest. If only I could see to write up my diary. Well, I could come next week and give you a hand. That's real nice, Kate. But I've got to be getting back. Besides, I'll be fine by then. We could organise you a week's convalescence by the sea. Oh, thanks, Kate, but I've got to be getting back. And you all feel the need to rush back. Because the platoon's down to 15 blokes. But that's not your concern. You've done your share. Yeah, but I have to look at myself in the mirror. Martin's going real well. What? He's our company commander now. He turned up on this tank and captured a machine gun post. Well, he's been in the thick of it ever since. He says that the Germans are just about done for. And if we keep on pushing hard, the whole thing could be over in a few weeks. Oh, you'd be real proud of him, Kate. Merci. The best. Of course. Goes with this. What bite? on the left hand. Damn you, Martin. Oh, it wasn't supposed to be like this. Not here, not... Love, the war's almost over. Another push, the Germans will be.
hell, it's Marty and Company HQ. They're walking right into it. Of that event in the Olympics. I'm back in here for the gold medal. Right. Deserves a better one than that. Well done, mate. Here a bit close. If I hadn't been, I wouldn't have seen it to believe it. <laughs> hey, go easy. That's fine. Good. Exceptional work. Nights are getting chilly again. <laughs> How many jumping off tapes, huh? How many zero hours? Too bloody many, mate. Oh, there won't be many more. I hope so. There won't be many more Anzacs. That'll be over in a few weeks. Where have I heard that before? <laughs> so, how are the boys? Just about buggered. Down, buddy. Take care of those with the reserve. You go on, right? A few houses left yet. Wouldn't know I'll take care of those. Well, go on. Drive the Parsons. Make sure you take care of the captain. <laughs>
recommendation for the Victoria Cross. On the morning of the 3rd of October, a concealed German machine gun was disposed of. There's an officer out there, asking for you. Can you relieve me for five minutes? Of course. It's Martin. Want to hear about it? He wasn't even fit. And he should have been home in Australia. It was his decision. Oh, yes, he had to get back to the battalion. You'd be the same way, wouldn't you? Maybe. Bloody men. The stupid <laughs> expecting it. But as the weeks got on, I began to hope. Hope. That's for foolish young girls. Nothing ever changes. Sometimes. Pull them out, mate. Pull out! Right out, Let's see what we got for breakfast today. Bully beef. Bully beef. Bully. What you got, Bill? Bully. Oh, good. Wouldn't want them to spoil us and soften us by giving us fancy tucker like baked beans and stew. Doesn't just it's a animal. Hey Kaiser, what are those kids saying? They're saying that we're Australians. They've heard about us. They say that we're like animals in battle. Well, that's not very nice. Mind you, I know a few blokes who turn into animals in the boozer. I can't tell if they mean it as a compliment. Wenn habt ihr zuletzt gegessen? Seit 14 Tagen ist nicht durchgekommen. They haven't had proper rations in a fortnight. Well, it's either that or eat behind a tree. All right, I'll be the mug. What's happening? Boys, you've all just lost your jobs. As of 1100 tomorrow, an armistice. All finny.
Scheibe. Machinery business. How about you? Staying with nursing? Mm -mm. Back to the bush then. Oh, anywhere, but. You uh, ever been in business? No. But I could learn. I bet you could. I know where to get some capital. Exactly what I was thinking. Partner. They shall not grow old, as we that are left will grow old. Age will not weary them, or the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Thank you. 